Tonight, the Alibaba IPO broke records, huge lines for the new iPhones, and who is selling drugs on Instagram? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 176 for Friday, September 19th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting, healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with healthy, delicious treats like honey Dijon pretzels. To get your free NatureBox sampler, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. First up, Alibaba's big IPO was indeed big. The company closed on its first day of trading as a public company at $93.89 with a valuation of more than $231 billion. Bloomberg notes that it is now worth more than Facebook, which passed $200 billion in market value earlier this month and is worth two. $201.6 billion as of today's close. As for Alibaba's U.S.-based e-commerce rivals, Amazon is valued at about $153 billion, while eBay is worth $65 billion. Alibaba's $21.8 billion sale was the biggest ever IPO for a technology company. At an IPO price of $68 a share, Alibaba was valued at 29 times expected earnings for the year through March, and analysts forecast that Alibaba's earnings will grow 50% in fiscal year 2015 from the previous 12 months. That was a lot of billions. Apple's new iPhone 6 and 6 Plus officially went on sale today to predictably long store lines at Apple stores around the world. Apple CEO Tim Cook made an appearance at the company's local Apple store in Palo Alto, California, while Apple's new SVP of retail and online stores, Angela Arendt, uh, oversaw the iPhone's launch to world's first customers in Sydney, Australia. Although the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus launched today in the U.S., Hong Kong, Japan, and Australia, there is no release date set for China, which is the world's biggest smartphone market. That creates opportunities for outside uh, vendors with access to the supply chain, big returns on marked up black market iPhone models. Bloomberg reports Beijing uh, based vendors are already offering two day delivery of a 16 gig iPhone 6 for 8,000 yuan. That's $1,303 American. And the 128 gig iPhone 6 for delivery on September 20th at the equivalent of about $2,441. That's a lot higher than the Hong Kong price of about $927. China's Xinhua a news agency said yesterday that iPhones have cleared just two of three regulatory steps necessary to be sold in the country and still need network access licenses from the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. But enough about iPhones. It's Friday, so why not talk a little bit about Android 2? The next generation of Google's Android OS, the L release, is due for release next month, or so they say. Uh, and the company has announced it will encrypt data by default for the first time, meaning that encryption happens automatically for new Android devices. And only someone who enters a device's password will be able to see pictures, videos, and other data stored on those smartphones. Google joins Apple, of course, with a new form of encryption that in many cases makes it impossible for law enforcement to collect evidence off the phones, even with the necessary search warrants. The newest Android devices will likely ship with default encryption after October. One Bitcoin Ponzi scheme down. A U.S. federal judge has ordered Bitcoin Savings and Trust and its owner to pay a combined $40.7 million after the Securities and Exchange Commission established that the company at, was a Ponzi scheme using Bitcoins to sell investments. The SEC said Bitcoin Savings and Trust owner Trendon Shavers used the online handle Pirate at 40 to raise over 732,000 Bitcoin from February 2011 to August 2012, promising investors up to 7% in weekly interest to be paid based on his ability to trade the currency. Shavers and his company are now liable to give up $38.6 million of illegal profits plus $1.8 million in interest. Each defendant in the Texas case was also fined $150,000. Now, later in the show, coming to a state trooper near you, a radar gun that detects 
texting drivers. And next, I'll talk with Fletcher Babb uh, from VentureBeat about why Instagram seems to be a haven for illegal drug sales. But first, drop that candy bar, drop the potato chips. They're not good for you. Do what I do and we here at the Twit Studio do all the time. Get natural, delicious snacks at naturebox.com. I'm going to give you the chance to get free snacks with a sampler box featuring five of their most popular snacks. Naturebox has hundreds of delicious snacks. Uh, I don't I don't feel guilty about eating them because they're better for me. They've got zero artificial ingredients, zero trans fats, and zero high fructose corn syrup. You'll even find snacks that are low in sugar and gluten-free. So in the afternoon when you're hungry, do what I do. Grab dark cocoa num nums from Nature Box or tart apple mango crispy chews or sea salt sun crunch. I love the names of these foods. Uh, so good and so good for you. Start your free trial and get a free sample or box at naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, start snacking smarter. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank Nature Box for their support of Tech News Tonight. All righty. Uh, joining me now is Fletcher Babb, a contributor to Venture Breed. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So selling illegal things on the internet or social media is not necessarily a new thing. And Fletcher, you wrote a story today that detailed the selling and marketing of illegal drugs on Instagram. So how about, first of all, why don't you walk us through what's happening exactly on Instagram and how these dealers are pulling this off? Well, it's it's almost surprising how um, benign it this this whole process actually is. It's funny, you know. It's almost as if there was no news that I was actually breaking. Right? It's all happening um, in public. So using hashtags, um, and we uh, in this article listed about. Um, a good, a good half dozen or so that, that you can check uh, on your own, um, but you can also enter the name of any prescription drug, any sort of uh, drug that you can abuse, and uh, you can search it, and it's, it's, um, they're there, and it's an, it's an open drug market. You don't have to, um, uh, you don't have to any kind of private account. Um, it's, it's just there. Uh, you can, you can browse it as though it was a menu. Wow, it's kind of kind of crazy that it's uh, so easy to access by using something as uh, as <laughs> widely used as Instagram. Now, dealers are doing this obviously out in the open. Uh, how exactly are they able to do this without being caught? And are law enforcement doing anything about it at this point? Uh, not to our well, okay. So, in our previous article, we ran a, a story last week that detailed uh, step by step how these guys are actually able to avoid detection, and it's basically um, they create a sandbox environment in a laptop, basically a burner laptop. They run uh, a program called Virtual Box, and so they have basically an Android operating system inside of a burner computer, and they use that sandbox environment to connect via a VPN um, to run Instagram. So you are in a safe environment inside of a safe computer that is connected to the internet somewhere far, far away. And you have removed uh, almost any chance of you actually getting, uh, getting caught. Wow, that's crazy. Is there any way to know how many dealers uh, are out there participating in this kind of Instagram drug trade or... Not really. You know, we tried. Um, it's it's really hard to get a firm number on this kind of thing um, because we're using something so ephemeral as a hashtag. Um, it's it's really kind of un, it's it's hard for us to be scientific. And uh, we've also reached out to Instagram several times um, to try to get a you know an idea of uh, of how common this is, and they were um, naturally unwilling to give us that information. Right, right. Now, you also mentioned in your piece that there is a bit of self-regulation happening on Instagram. Can you explain what's going on there? Um, are you referring to the sort of flagging system? Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I see. I see. Self-regulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are a whole number of accounts that are dedicated specifically to um, calling out uh, scammer accounts. There are tons of people that aren't actually selling drugs at all. They just would like to have you think that they are because they're very interested in taking your money. Right. Um, but because this is harming um, some quote-unquote legitimate operations, um, 
legitimately illegitimate, so to speak. Uh, there are a bunch of accounts that are specifically dedicated to unmasking these people to bolster the reputations of those that are, um, you know, in, in uh, solid business. Right. And then finally, of course, we have to ask what the response has been from Facebook, which is Instagram's parent company. Have they have they taken this seriously? Are they uh, seriously involved in kind of cracking down on this at all? They're, they're definitely involved in cracking down. Uh, we link to a number of other stories where uh, there might be a DEA bust uh, that culminated in tracking several people through Instagram. They're definitely uh, cooperating with the authorities. Uh, we just don't know the extent to which uh, this problem is, you know, actually happening. Um, an interesting note is that in the first piece that we ran last week, uh, we had a feature image that had a hashtag that said Xanax for sale. And uh, overnight, that hashtag uh, was, was erased and you can no longer mm. contact it or, you know, you can no longer browse through it. So even though we had uh, reached out to them several times, um, we know that we know that they have seen some of the hashtags that we have, uh, you know, that we've uncovered and they've uh, rather quietly blocked them, let them go. Right. There's a little bit of regulation happening behind the scenes. We'll see. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, Fletcher, fantastic um, kind of insight into something that really just seems like it's so it's so easy to access. So out there yet so illegal at the same time. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a really good piece. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Fletcher Babb, of course, is a contributor at VentureBeat. Where can people follow your work online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Fletcher Babb, and basically any other place that uses a, an at symbol. Uh, that's and um, You can find me there with my name. All right, cool. Thanks so much, Fletcher. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate it. Take care. All right, you too. And finally, it's no surprise that car accidents increasingly involve cell phones. Here's a potential deterrent. A company called Comsonics is developing a new type of radar gun that could help law enforcement sniff out distracted drivers. The device monitors and identifies radio signals associated with cell phone use. And according to Comsonics, cell phones emit different frequencies when sending a text, making a call, or transferring data, which could allow police to single out illegal driving activities. For example, in Comsonic's home state of Virginia, texting is illegal, but talking while driving is still okay. The technology has some questions to tackle, though, of course. Uh, what if it's a passenger that's texting, or the driver has data pings on their iPhone or Android, but isn't responding? And uh, does voice-to-text software uh, get picked up by radar? All good questions. Or how about this? If you're driving, doing something that you think might get you pulled over, Mm, don't do it. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. That's every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.